What's up guys, I just ran two miles so I'm really tired and I don't have the energy to make this video But I'm gonna make a video anyway, so bear with me even though I might sound like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about But I do know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get into this problem. All right, Canton count on Canton So there's a proof in mathematics, which is the set of rational num numbers is countable So the proof works by basically just Labeling the, the set of rational numbers as of the diagram here. So what you have here you have 1 over 1 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, yada, 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 right? And then we have here, we have 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, 2 over 4, 2 over 5, yada, yada, yada. Then we have 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 3, 3 over 4, 3 over 5, yada, yada, yada. 4 over 1, 4 over 2, 4 over 3, 4 over 4, 4 over 5. And then 5 over 1, 5 over 2, 5 over 3, 5 over 4, 5 over 5. Okay, so in the diagram, the first term is 1 over 1. So it's this this term, the first term, right? One over one. Do you see this? Yeah, right here. Okay. My mouse has on here. Okay. The second term is one over two, which is this one over two. Okay. And the third term is two over one. So it's this two over one. And the fourth term is three over one, which is this bottom three over one. And the, uh, the fourth term, fourth the term is two over one. Yeah. Fifth term is two over two. So two over two here and so on and so forth. Now, basically our job is to write a program that basically given the, uh, number uh, n, whatever number it is, it'll tell us the, the whatever term it is for the next term, right? So in this case, um, our input was three. So what is the third term? Well, if we go through our through the list value here, okay, one over one is this, one over two is this, one over two is the second term, two over one is the third term, right? So the answer is two over one. Uh, the 14th term is, uh, yeah, okay, so the 14th term, uh, we'll go over that later, but uh, let's look at the seventh term. So the seventh term, how this works is it goes one over one, then it goes right, one over two, then it goes diagonal, two over one, it goes down, three over one. So here, uh, one, two, three, four, then it goes up, right, two over two, then it goes up, right, uh, one over three. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it goes one right, which is one over, se uh, one over four, which is the seventh term. So the seventh term is one over four. So, um, in order to solve this problem, you have to understand, look at the pattern. So this is an ad hoc problem. It's not really like a, it's not a math problem or anything, but I'll just, I'll show you the pattern by just drawing out the numbers. Okay. So here we, let's look at this. Remember one over one, one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five. Okay. And then now we have two over one. Okay. I'll just keep drawing here. Hold up. I'll just keep drawing. I keep drawing, keep drawing. Oh, whoops. I just keep drawing and then we're gonna move this up here okay and then uh yeah let's keep drawing i don't, I don't feel like editing this video because i'm really lazy but two over one two over two two over three two over four two over five three over one three over two three over three three over four three over five uh, four over one four over two four over three four over four four over five Five over one. Okay. Five over two, five over three, five over four, five over five. All right. So how does this pattern work? Well, um, how it works is that you start on the f top left, one over one. And so this is the first term, right? Then um, we go right one. So then now we have one over two. So this is the second term. Then we go diagonal down. So then this is a uh, two over one. So this is the third. And then um, let's see. Well, what was it? Two diagonal down. Oh, that, yeah. And then we go one over. Uh, then we go down one. So now we go down one. So here. So that was the fourth term. Three over one. Okay. And now we're gonna go diagonal to the right, up. So we're gonna go here. So this is the fifth term. Okay. And then we go diagonal up again. So here. So this is the sixth term. And then we go one over the right over four so this is the seventh term diagonal down two over third eighth term diagonal down three over second ninth term diagonal down four over one tenth term then we go down four, five over one this is eleventh term then we go diagonal up so this is the 12th term, 13th, 
14th, 15th. So this is 15th. So I hope you guys understand the pattern right now. So how the pattern works, if you want to get the nth term, this is how it works. You start on the top left of one over one, you go right, then you go down. So you go right, you go right one spot, right? Then you go diagonal down, okay? Then from here, you go down one, then you go diagonal up, okay? So from th here, you have three over one. So now we go diagonal up. So now we're gonna keep going diagonal up. So the sixth term is gonna be here. Once we're at this back to the first line, right, again, we're gonna go one to over to the right. So going one over right, that's our seventh term. So that's one over four. And then after that, we're gonna go diagonal da down again. So we're gonna go to two thirds, three, three halves, four, uh, four over one. After that, when we're at four over one, we're gonna go down one, okay? And then we're gonna go diagonal up. Once again, go all the way up, diagonal up, up to one over five. Then after that, when we're on the top left, we're gonna go down again down one. So then we have six, this is 16th. So basically to get the nth term, what you do is you go right one, diagonal down, go down one, diagonal up, go right one, diagonal down, go down one, diagonal up, right? And then um, once you get to the top one, you go down one, okay? So essentially is, is that you have, um, you have a few moves you have to do, okay? So here, I'm gonna just minimize this real quick. Okay, so there's a few moves you have to do. So for one, you have to go right. So you're gonna go right, this is right. Then after that, you gotta go, this is one to the right, by the way, one to the right, one right. Okay, then you have to go diagonal down. So this is diagonal. Okay, then you gotta go one down. Okay, then you have to go diagonal upwards. So this is uh, diagonal right. Okay, so then uh, how do you do? How do you do? How do how do you basically do these operations? Okay, so we're just basically going to keep repeating these operations over and over again until we get to our nth term. Okay, so how do you do this? Okay, for for starters, to go one to the right, all you have to do is uh, if you look at the first term, the first term is one over one, right? So if you go one to the right, what you do is you just add one to the denominator. So for that, you just basically just add one to the denominator, so that makes it one to the right. So that's really easy, right? You just add one to the denominator, then that's one over the right, one to the right. Another thing is easy is um, going one down. How do you go one down? Well, if you go from the third term to the fourth term to go one down, you basically just add one to the numerator. So for, in here, in this case, we have two over one. Now we add one to the numerator, so that goes down one term, so that now it's three over one, okay? So that's basically, that's easy also. Okay, now here's a part where it's the hardest part. Harder ones. Okay, so how do you go diagonal? Uh, let's go over diagonal downwards first. So how do you go diagonal down? Okay, so if you look at the seventh term, one over four, right? When I'm going diagonal down, what pattern do you see? Well, first off, it goes one over four, then it goes two over three, three over two, then four over one, okay? So basically what it's doing is to go diagonal down, all it's doing is just adding one to the numerator, and then subtracting one from the denominator over and over again. That's what it's doing. So the seventh term, one over four, two, eighth term is two over third, ninth term is three over two, tenth term is four over one, right? And it's adding one to the numerator. So the numerator is one, it becomes two, becomes three, becomes four. And then the denominator is four, and now it becomes three, becomes two, becomes one. So to go diagonal down, all you have to do is do like a while loop while the denominator is not equal to one, right? Or our denominator is not equal to one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the one from the denominator, over and over again, and then we're gonna add one to the numerator over and over again. And yeah, that's basically how you go diagonal down. Now, how do you go diagonal upwards? That's our last term, okay? Now to go diagonal upwards, all you have to do, it's basically the same thing. Um, instead, if we look at the 11th term, five over one, five over one, right? Five over one. Um, now to go diagonal up, what it's doing, it goes five over one, becomes four over two, three over three, two over four, one over five. So in the, the now for diagonal upwards, it's different. Instead of um, the not denominator going down to one, this time it's the numerator going down to one. So for a diagonal going up, we're just gonna do a while loop. While our numerator is not equal to one, we're just gonna keep 
decrease the numerator by one and then increasing our denominator by one. So we're gonna have five over one becomes, it goes from five, four, three, two, one. And then our denominator was one. It goes one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's basically the gist of this problem. We're gonna have two variables, numerator and denominator. And we're just gonna repeat these operations. Okay, we're gonna add one uh, to go right. We're gonna add one to the denominator to go di diagonal. We're gonna use that while loop. Um, to go downwards for the down one, we're going to add one to the numerator. And diagonal up, we're going to use another while loop. And we're going to keep repeating this until our value of our current um, counter for how, for our, the current counter of the number of terms is going to equal to n, right? Because uh, we want to find, let's say we want to find the 18th term. So we're just what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the, uh, this operation so and so number of times. Uh, until we reach the 18th term and then at that time when we reach the 18th term we break and then we print out our answer okay um so i'm going to explain my code now because uh i don't feel like editing this video because i'm really tired and uh, also yeah i'm really tired so let's just go to uh my my uh how the hell do i go back oh, okay yeah my my status okay so yeah uh da, 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 da. i think it's edit okay so to do this problem, let's just scroll down real quick. Okay, so main method, just read a number of test cases uh, while our number of test cases is uh, t minus minus. So number of test cases is t, while t minus minus, we're gonna read in n and then we're gonna call solved. So n is like the current, the nth term that we want, and then we call solved, okay? So what do I do here? Okay, so our k just represents like the number of times the current, uh, current K represents the current term we're on, right? So the first term we're on was one, right? So we want to keep going, do our while loop until we reach the nth term, right? Cause we want to find the nth term. Like if I give you the 17th term, I want to get to the 17th term, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep incrementing K by one every time I go to the next term until I reach the 17th term. So that's what I, our K is, okay? Now uh, I have a numerator and a denominator and I both set that to equal to one. And the reason why I set them to equal to one is because the first value, the first term in our um, in our cases here is one over one, right? So the, the numerator is, the f is always one and the denominator is one. So that's the reason why we do that, okay? Okay, all right. Um, so if the numerator is equal to one, this is gonna go, we're gonna go right. We're gonna go right by one. That's the time when we go right by one because if our numerator is one, we go right by one. And to do that, we, uh, we just add denominator by plus one. So for that here, we just add denominator plus one, and then we increase our term to the next term, right? So a K plus plus goes the next term. Okay, um, I have this check to check if we reach the nth term already. Um, you don't, uh, I did that because like, I know uh, certain con conditions, like what if you already reached the term? So yeah, you're gonna have to do that. So I, I do this check just in case of, like uh, I reached other terms already, if I already reached the nth term. So if I, if k is equal to n, I just break. So I'm already done, okay? Now, um, once we went one to the right, right? once we didn't went one to the right, now we have to go diagonal down. So how do I do that? So to go diagonal down, what I do is while my denominator is greater than one, so while it's not really equal to one, and our k is less than n, so k is our the current term, right? This is just making sure that uh, I didn't reach the nth term already, right? This 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 condition. But basically, you just say while our denominator is equal to is greater than one. So in this case, um, if we go back to our terms, going down, we have let's say we're at the seventh term, one over four. Then um, while our denominator is not equal to one, right? I'm going to keep decreasing denominator by one. So it'll be four, three, two, one until we reach four over one. So that's what this does. So that's what this while loop does. So while denominator is greater than one, I'm gonna do numerator plus one, and then on denominator minus one. And then I incre increase K. Cause uh, the reason why I increase K is that I'm gonna, that's the, that makes sure that goes to the next next term, right? So if I have one, one over four, that's the seventh term, then I go to eighth term. So that's plus one, the ninth term plus one, 10th term. Okay, so that's basically the gist of it. Okay, so that's how to go diagonal down. I have, not, I have another case to check if I already reached the nth term. If I already reached the nth term, k is equal to n, then I just break. Okay, that's what this, this case is for. All right, now um, once I reached 
diagonal down, right? Uh, I have to go one down. And to go one down, you just set the, uh, you increase one to the numerator. So uh, for that, you just check if our denominator is already one. So in this case, four over one, right? Our denominator is already one. So I just increase numerator by one. So for that here, if denominator is equal to one then numerator plus one, and then uh, I increase one, my counter of the kth term to the next term. So that's what I do. Okay. Um, and then if K is equal to N, we just break. Okay. So this, this is checking if I already reached the next, uh, the nth term already. So I do that every time because just in case if I already reached the nth term or not. So there's no reason, there's no reason to keep going again and then, but yeah, uh, that's what this is for. So this, this if statement was for to go down and then this, this if statement is just checking if again, if I already reached the nth term. All right. Now, once we go down one, um, we also have to go diagonal up again. So for that, why do I keep going visual studio for that? All you do is, um, while numerator is greater than one. So while numerator is, uh, not equal to one. So diagonal up. Remember what we do is we're going to keep subtracting one from the numerator while our numerator is not equal to one. We're just going to keep subtracting one from our numerator. And then our, we're going to add one to our denominator over and over again. So that's what this is for. Okay. So while numerator is greater than one and our, and we're not at, at the nth term yet, we're going to subtract one from the numerator over and over again, and we're going to add one to the denominator and we're going to increase our K so that we go to the next term over and over again. Now I have another if statement to see if I already reached the nth term. And if I did, I just break. <clears throat> okay. Uh, after when you break out of this, I, you have to print out the term. So here you just do term, print out the term, print out, print a space, print out N and you say is, and then you print out your numerator divided by denominator. And that's pretty much the gist of this code. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed because uh, I need to fix my sleep schedule. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. Check you guys later. Peace.